I, just, I tend to use bigger services when I'm not buying directly from stores. stores. So these are uh, these are big websites. They'll ship you clothes, toys, car parts, whatever. If it's in Japan, they'll do it for you. They don't care what it is. <laughs> as long as it's not illegal. If it's illegal to come into your country, then they won't. Okay. That's what you think. <laughs> uh, so it's typically a, a self-service system where you, you put in the URL what you want to buy. They do have personal services. It's generally really expensive, like 5,000 yen flat fee plus commission. When you say personal services, what do you mean? Like going out and buying going stuff for you. Going to the store, you okay. Sh you should use one of the services that she talked about earlier if you want to do something like that. Uh, I would say that commercial services are better for people who've already done an order or two from Japan and kind of know what they're doing or are comfortable making <coughs> decisions by themselves. Uh, so there's a few big ones, uh, Japanica, Rinkia. Rinkia and Selga go way back and they're both awful. <laughs> Rinkia especially is like 20% or something. Yeah. Uh, not been shopping all Japan, mail order Japan. Uh, the one we're going to talk about today is from Japan, and uh, you, you'll see why in a second. They ship about a thousand orders a day, so they're very high volume. Uh, they have probably the most advanced shopping service website I've seen, and their fee is Two dollars per item. That's amazing. What? Two dollars per item, and then a five percent payment fee, which is basically the PayPal fee, yeah, which you would have to pay with anyone. Uh, so. And it's a max of eight hundred yen. So, like, if you order fifteen items from the same store, it's eight dollars. Very, very good. And it's based on item, not price. I actually found out about these guys through high-end menswear communities. These guys started importing Yoji Yamamoto from the Yahoo Japan auctions. <laughs> And everyone is using them, so uh, they're they're very well regarded. Uh, you can avoid. Uh, I'll talk about bank transfers. Uh, so if you ever had to send a bank transfer to someone, you have to go to your bank and fill out the longest form. You have to fill out the Japanese address in Japanese with exact format. I mean, romaji, but Japanese. Uh, they like make you fill it out there, they like watch you, you're standing at the bank counter for like 20 minutes filling this thing out, and it takes like two weeks for it to get to them, and the lowest fee is like 30 bucks or something. That's a lot of money to send a bank. Just pay the 5%. 5% <laughs> <laughs> PayPal fee is, is This is the biggest waste of time in your life, and I still had to do it because a bunch of Japanese stores don't take PayPal. That's true. Um, one thing I wanted to say before we go into from Japan, so we're like, from Japan is like the commercial, and then I was just talking about the personal. Um, and I was just saying, I just wanted to say that, like, for auctions, sometimes personal shopping services are more likely to be allowed to bid by the seller than a commercial shopping service. And the reason why is because some sellers, for whatever reason, are mistrustful of commercial shopping services. So if they know that one of those commercial services is bidding on their item, they have the right to refuse them service. Well, but if it's a personal shopping service living in Japan, they won't totally know. I mean, the honest answer is, is that they won't sell to some commercial services because they know that's what they are and they don't want people outside of Japan bidding on these items. Yeah. It's kind of a gross truth, but it's something that happens. Uh, I would say that this doesn't happen super often. Not too often, but I have had that's happened to me a couple times. Yeah. I know um, I used the commercial service for um, Yahoo auctions and they often have like secret um, Secret accounts. Secret accounts, and like still the person kept refusing them because they knew it was like a foreigner kept bidding on the same item. So it was really sad. Are you Yeah. No foreigners. In this <laughs> yeah, no foreigners. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is from Japan's interface. One of the really cool things about from Japan is they have a universal search where you can literally just type in what you're looking for, and it will search Yahoo Japan, it'll search Rakuten, it'll search Amazon, and it'll show you all the results here. So it doesn't have MBOC, it has bidders, which nobody uses, so I'm not going to waste my time on bidders. They actually rebranded, and I don't think this works anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you can filter by buy it now, you can filter by condition, new and used. Yeah, you can see here, Rakuten, Zolo Town, which I'll talk about a bit later. Uh, if you can filter by price, I've actually sorted these by highest price, because the screenshot looked better. Because <laughs> sorting by lowest price, it was just like really blurry pictures of like head bows. <laughs> uh, so when you click on an item, you actually get this interface. It's a custom interface from from Japan where you have all these options on the side. You can actually calculate the total cost from here. So it'll tell you like this is what this is going to cost plus shipping, plus the commission fee. 
Uh, you can add it to a watch list. Uh, so if you wanted to buy this item, you would simply just click bid or sniper bid. So she said earlier that sniper bid is impossible. This is technically true, but you should still bid near the end. Bidding in the last five minutes is better than nothing. This is true. Uh, any shopping service, I would, well, I would say almost any shopping service, requires a 100% deposit for a bid. I've had some that allow 50. This is a really dangerous road to embark down because <laughs> you can just keep buying stuff. You're spending more money that you don't have, essentially. You're only spending 50% of the money that you actually need to buy this. Yeah, items. and then you get the invoice that's like, oh. <laughs> um, okay, so. Other cool features from, from Japan, which I like a lot, are watch lists. If you're not ready to, to bid on something right away, you can actually just add it to the watch list. You can ha set it up to send you email alerts like an hour before it ends, and you'll probably be asleep because of the time zone difference, though. Um, there's also the total calculator, which I mentioned earlier. So you input the, uh, the item cost, approximate weight. You can, you can probably guess most of these pretty well. And it'll give you the total, uh, total cost here. So yeah, you can see that. It's much cheaper than the example I gave, mostly because it only costs $2. Very much that. Super good. Uh, so some auction tips. Uh, make sure you understand the description. You probably don't because it's in Japanese and Carl's translation is not going to be that good. So if it's like three paragraphs, you should ask your service before you bid on it. Um, just like on eBay, there's scammers on Japanese sites. Uh, don't bid on items that only have stock photos. Uh, homemade Lucky Pack, you want to explain what a Lucky Pack is? Yeah, so a Lucky Pack, well if you get a legit Lucky Pack, it's like a bunch of stuff from a from a Lolita store or any store in Japan, I guess, clothing store. So you like clearance stuff, that they're yeah, like, just put it in a big bag and sell it. And then you open it and you are lucky, you get all this stuff out. Usually you get a really good value, but sometimes people make lined Lucky Packs that are homemade, and what that ends up meaning is that uh, basically means that they've like taken stuff that they want to get rid of and put it in this lucky pack and you don't get to see it until it arrives to you. People have been screwed over very badly buying these There's absolutely lucky packs. no chance you get something cool in that bag. No, so. you should never, unless you know exactly what you're bidding on, you should never bid. Um, and one of the main reasons for that is because if you want to leave negative feedback for someone who scammed you, the shopping service will not let you do that because they could get retaliatory negative feedback that will kill their business. So you have to be really careful when you're bidding. And even a lot of times they'll like have pictures saying, this is of course going to be in the Lucky Pack. It's not. And so it's not. just don't bid on any Lucky Packs. Yeah, I would say not just homemade, just don't bid on Lucky Packs on auction sites at all. Buy them directly from the store or don't buy them. Uh, it's like, I'm talking about this. Here. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a strategy that I would recommend. Don't bid in small amounts over and over again. If you're willing to pay, Hundred bucks for something, just put it there. It's more likely to discourage people from bidding against you rather than constant back and forth because you're just going to piss people off and they're going to want to eat. <laughs> and they have a bit of an advantage. This is true. So just bid the maximum right away. If you lose, well, it's going to happen. Um, yeah, I'll talk about some of it. You can talk about some of it. So, Tabo, um, Tabo is fantastic. Um, and the reason why it's fantastic is because stuff on Taobao is really, really cheap. And you can find anything on Taobao, including really high quality Lolita fashion clothing. Um, and so, and underwear, and apparently. Back, 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 what does that mean? I feel like that. So, Google Chrome is fantastic for navigating Taobao because it's all in Chinese almost yes. always. So, you're going to need that to see what's being sold and to search the websites. Um, I was going to talk about. Uh, do we have like the Lolita stores that we can show? Yeah. Okay. So these are some pictures from Lolita brands that exist on Taobao. Um, the quality is very high. These wrist cuffs that I'm wearing today are from Taobao and they cost me four dollars and they are fantastic. Um, so this headbow is from Taobao. So they make really great quality stuff for really affordable prices. So I definitely recommend that. And like we say on here, some of those shops even do custom sizing. Meaning that no matter what size you are, you can get a dress that fits you perfectly by giving them your measurements, which is fantastic. And then we've listed some of the shops here that sell Lolita. Um, if you look these up on Google, um, just like the name, and then put Taobao after it, you will find their shop and you can browse everything that they have for sale. Go. Um, so we use shopping services to buy from Taobao because most shops don't ship out of Asia, although some do. So 
So I use um, TaobaoNow.com to buy my stuff from Taobao. If you go to TaobaoNow.com, they have a very comprehensive explanation of how to use their website, including in like a video shopping cart presentation that shows you how to use it. So we're not going to explain the step-by-step -step of how to use it. Um, one of the things that I think you should remember is that they only accept payment in Hong Kong dollar. They will not accept USD. They will not accept Canadian. So you need to think about the conversion of your money to Hong Kong dollar. You should look at currency converters. My favorite one is XE.com, um, and that will show you how much you're actually going to be paying. Paying is though, PayPal's exchange yes. rate yeah. always not sucks. <laughs> It is always ripping you off just a little bit. Just a little. But again, PayPal is a necessary evil, and most shopping services, including Taobao now, typically only accept PayPal. Sometimes credit card, but typically only PayPal, so you kind of have to have to do that. Um, yeah, so you get two invoices from a Taobao shopping service, which most shopping services do, but this one is it's always two no matter what. So the first one is the cost of the items that you're buying. Plus their shopping service fee, which we've talked about before. Um, and then domestic shipping, so from China to China, the shop to their office. And then any other fees, so like your PayPal fees and what have you. And then the second invoice, sorry. Um, I just wanted to say for the exchange rate, uh, you can set it up so that your credit card um, does the exchange rate for you and that usually works out to be cheaper. Yes. Right, oh. yes. You're doing but. Right. PayPal's fee when you pay by credit card is way higher. Is it really? In my experience, I something that would cost like five percent is like twenty percent. Yeah, I think they do have a little bit. I've of never had that. No, yeah. it's possible that whatever my situation was was just crappy. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm flat out wrong. <laughs> But yeah, definitely always keep an eye on these extra fees though, these PayPal fees, these credit card fees. You need to know them because you're typically responsible for them. The shopping service is not going to cover that for you, so, and they shouldn't be expected to. Um, and your second invoice is just shipping from their Chinese office to your home. And that's typically done by EMS, but sometimes they have cheaper shipping options that take longer, you should take but are more EMS. affordable. But you should probably take EMS. It's the most reliable shipping. If it gets lost and you don't have EMS, you're basically out of luck. Sometimes Chinese airmail does have tracking mail, okay. but I don't know if it has insurance. Anyway, shipping is a whole other beast. Uh, we're going to talk for a minute about Taobao resellers. I'm only going to talk about two. One of them is called clubaonline.com. Um, it is a Lolita-centric Taobao reseller. Um, you might be asking, what's the point of using a Taobao reseller when I can just order from Taobao myself? And the reason why is because when you order from Taobao yourself, you have to do all of the searching. You have to find everything that you want. Whereas on Klava, everything is listed for you. He lists all of the dresses in one place, all of the shoes in one place. You just go on his website, you pick out what you want, you send him an email, and he does all of the work for you. So that's why it's beneficial. Um, one of the drawbacks to ordering from Klava Online is that sometimes the guy who runs the shop, Martin, is hosting a pre-order. So look at pre-order. That means that your stuff is going to be made to order, and in some cases, it can take a really long time for you to get it. Like a year. Yes. Not <laughs> always a year, but yes, there have been horror stories of people waiting a year for a pair Over of shoes. So this is a thing that can sometimes happen. So make sure that you're willing to wait for something if you see pre-order listed on the side. And I guess uh, if you're in doubt about how long it's going to take, you should probably ask. Always ask him, and he will be yes. very upfront with you. He's a very kind man, and I've had only good experiences with Club Online. So yeah, uh, not everything is pre-order. They do have stuff in stock that's available to you immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, Pablo, yes. is, it, is he located in the room? I believe so, yes. So I think that he has direct access to those shops. Sometimes he gets really good wholesale prices as well, and he'll pass those savings on to you. So for example, if Martin's ordering 50 pairs of shoes from Antenna or whatever, he'll get a nice bulk shipment of that, and then you won't end up needing to pay too much. Though on most things that he sells, he has to charge a bit of a premium to stay in business. It's not very high though, um, and sometimes it's worth it to just go through him instead of doing all of the work yourself. Is he like American or not? I have no idea. Okay, I've never played like Mark. Maybe he's using a kind American name. Maybe. <laughs> His English is perfect, though. I've talked to him many times. And it's possible that he's an American or some other foreign ethnicity living, living in, China. in China. Yeah. Um, and I was going to talk for a second about. Oh, no. um, that's okay. 
I was going to talk for a second about Twilight. Some of you guys might know about Twilight. Um, it is in Kensington Market in downtown Toronto. She also is selling in the dealer's room here. Um, what would I say about Twilight? She's essentially a Taobao reseller. All of her stock comes from Taobao. So you're paying a premium on the stuff that you buy from her. So she gets it online and then she charges extra so that she can make a profit on her business. Um, I would say the benefit to ordering stuff from her is, again, like, like um, Clava, she can get wholesale prices on certain things. So if she's selling a pair of shoes, she might sell it for cheaper than it would cost you online because she's getting them for a better rate. Um, and you can try dresses on in Twilight, or I don't know if you can try them on in the dealer's room, but you know, there's that extra ability of being able to hold the dress up to your body and seeing whether or not it's going to fit. Um, Anything cautionary about Twilight? Um, sometimes she does sell replicas, and you must be aware because sometimes she won't tell you it's a right. replica. So always be very aware of what you're buying from her. Check the yes. tags, check the quality of the dress, check the lace. Make sure that you know what you're buying. Um, if some, if a dress is angelic pretty, it will always have an angelic pretty tag on it. Um, I know I've seen uh, replicas. And somebody thought it was real, so you don't want to have that. Yeah, I would say that even uh, tags are often fake. I would, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. buy brand from someone who has a reputation of selling counterfeits. No, you know what? I would say never buy brand stuff unless it's from a reputable source yeah. or secondhand mm -hmm. from another person who bought it from a reputable source. Because factory fakes exist too. All sorts of fakes exist. So you always need to be protecting yourself and making sure that you're spending your money on something that's actually worth that money like, and uh, not a fake item. Like for example, an item that's manufactured in China, the factory that makes them for Angelic Pretty will also make some more. So Maybe not as good. Or something. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially the story. Yeah. The reject ones that have minor flaws. Yeah. Yes. yes. Like things that can catch your eye. You want to talk about shit? Oh, well, Lily Lily yeah. Paradise is the same thing as Claba Online. She's Facebook based and she basically shows all of the items that she's able to get for you from Tab Out. And like Martin, she does all of the work for you. What did you say about the Cutie Land or Cutie Land? Oh, Cutie Land is very similar to Claba Online. The reason why I didn't mention it is because I know that a lot of people have trouble with like communication with Cutie Land, like wanting to know how long their item is going to take and not hearing back from them for a long time. Well, Whereas Martin requests. tells you. I feel like they're. Right. Away. Are Extremely expensive as well. Yes, like, they you pay a steep premium you, you from Cutie Lens. Compared, yes. compared to um to Clubhouse, it's like a big difference. Yeah, sure. I totally agree. I don't think their service is really happy. Yeah, that's why I didn't mention it. I just thought that it wasn't as good. Now that Clubhouse exists, I suggest that everyone do it down. It's fantastic. Another note about Lolly Lake Paradise is that you do have to wait a long time sometimes for your items. Sometimes she'll say something's coming and it doesn't. I was supposed to have a blouse two weeks ago, and it's still not here, so sometimes you're just kind of waiting. Um, I feel like so. the consensus is you should probably just use Quava. <laughs> yeah. But even from like Taobao now, like I bought those scepters like a month ago, oh, and sometimes scepters. things, sometimes <laughs> things even from like regular Taobao shops, for whatever reason, will take a really long time to get to you. Either because they take a long time for the shop itself to manufacture, or your shopping service is kind of swamped with orders and they're not shipping your things out on time the way that you're expecting. So bumps can happen along the road, and if you need something for a specific deadline, it might not always get there. You should order as quickly as you can in advance to make sure. Buy <laughs> so our house yesterday, oh the mailman's here. Oh, that's not my stuff. <laughs>